Well, hey everybody, Pastor Steve here. So thankful that you are part of our Bible reading plan at First Baptist and also watching or listening to these uh, devotions each day. Today we are in 2 Timothy chapter 4. And while you're opening your Bible there, I want to just say happy birthday to my oldest grandchild, brother uh, Liam, who turns 13, big teenager now. So Liam, happy birthday. Paul loves you, buddy. All right, 2 Timothy chapter 4. And what I wrote at the top of my journal after reading this chapter is the beauty and the pain of being in community. The beauty and and the potential pain of being in a community. Paul, the Apostle Paul was very faithful to Jesus and the ministry Jesus had given him to the very end, even if he had to do it alone without any help or support. But Paul was a big believer in community and doing ministry with others, not alone, if at all possible, and, and having fellowship and fellow ministers and fellow servants and so on. And he, he surrounded himself with a team of men and women who loved Jesus, loved the church, loved the gospel. And when he's uh, writing this letter to Timothy, it's the second letter he wrote to Timothy, probably, uh, quite possibly, the last letter Paul ever wrote that we have. He writes it probably while he's in Ephesus, and, or, or while Timothy, rather, is in Ephesus. And Paul is actually in Rome, uh, in prison, and expecting to be uh, executed. And he wants, um, he wants Timothy to come to him. This would be Paul's second imprisonment uh, in Rome, because I believe, and many believe, that after his first imprisonment that we read about at the end of the book of Acts, uh, where he was under house arrest for two years. He was actually released and went to Crete and some other places, then was arrested again and then executed. And, and uh, I think this is a letter he wrote Timothy while Timothy was in Ephesus and Paul was in Rome during that second imprisonment sometime before he actually died. And so he says in chapter 4, in verse 9 to Timothy, make every effort to come to me soon. He wanted Timothy to be with him and tells him to bring some personal items. In verse 13, when you come, bring the cloak, that outer garment, which I left at Troas with Carpus and the books, especially the parchment. So there were some personal items that Paul wanted with him there in prison. Maybe he had to leave those behind hurriedly because he was in Troas when he was arrested or he had to flee Troas quickly because he knew the Romans were looking for him. We don't know, but anyway, wanted Timothy to come to him soon and bring those personal items. And then he talks a lot about various individuals who were his um, ministry companions, fellow servants of the gospel, if you will. Um, and in verse 10, after telling Timothy to come to him quickly in Rome, he says, For Demas, having loved this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. So one of his uh, fellow ministers, servants, if you will, abandoned him because uh, he loved the world too much. He wasn't willing to put his life at risk and so on. And this is the same Demas that, probably, that, that was mentioned in Colossians chapter 4, verse 14, during Paul's earlier imprisonment in Rome. And Demas was with him and was faithful and, and true at that time. But this last one, when it looked like Paul was really going to be executed, Demas abandoned Paul. Um, but he also talks about other team members there at the end of chapter 4, verse 10. He says, Crescens has gone to Galatia and Titus to Dal Dalmatia. Dalmatia is modern Croatia. And these had not abandoned him, but Paul had sent them on ministry missions, if you will, to those two locations. He says in verse 11, only Luke... Uh, is with me. So he wasn't totally alone, but didn't have a lot of people there. And, and he says, Timothy, when you come, bring Mark, in verse 11, bring Mark with you. And uh, he says, Tychicus, in verse 12, I've sent to Ephesus. And then in verse 14, Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. Here's another guy that uh, I was in fellowship with who ended up hurting me. And in verse 15, even warns Timothy about Alexander and says, be, guard, be on guard against him yourself, for he vigorously opposed our teaching. And then 
in verse 16, he says, the first time I defended myself before the Romans during this second imprisonment, nobody was with me. Everybody deserted me, but the Lord was with me. Um, and then um, um, uh, he, he, he uh, talks in verse 21, make every effort to come before winter. Eubulus greets you also Pudens and Linus and Claudia and all the brethren. So by that time, Paul was not alone in Rome. The, the disciples in Rome had found the courage to uh, be with Paul and support him. So I love, I love how Paul, at the end of several of his books, mentions all these various individuals and just little tidbits about them because it demonstrates for us that Paul lived and and preached and ministered and served in community. He did not want to do it alone in isolation. He loved the church. He loved God's people. And he loved being in ministry with God's people and being part of a church. And, and all the brethren greet. It's, it's the, the Christians, the church that's in Rome that were supporting Paul at this point in time. Um, and and uh, occasionally he was disappointed as he was with Demas and Alexander. But the majority of these people were a blessing to him, and he loved them and enjoyed their presence. Um, and Paul kept going. He never quit. One of the takeaways for me is, is sometimes today uh, somebody gets hurt in church. It's not the whole church typically, but an individual or a group of individuals hurt someone, and they just give up on Jesus. They give up on the church and want to do Lone Ranger thing, and Paul wasn't like that. Paul never allowed what individuals did to 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 dissuade him from serving Jesus and dissuade him from being part of community, fellowship with the people of God and other other servants and so and so a couple of lessons his faithfulness did not depend on the behavior of others. His faithfulness did not depend on how others treated him. And secondly, he did not abandon community. He did not abandon fellowship. He did not abandon the church just because some people there hurt him or let him down. And those are valuable lessons for us today in our hypersensitive culture with all the social media where we attack people you know, without mercy. Sometimes we allow uh, a few bad apples to justify in our own thinking just walking away. Paul never did that. Disciples don't do that. Mature people, godly people, don't walk away. So don't you ever walk away. Live in community, stay connected, and stay faithful. That's the word for today. And I'll see you tomorrow.